Alright, so I've been wanting to make a video on the minimal gene set concept for a long time, and I think that this is something that's really important in science, and I think it's really, really relevant to the creation evolution debate. Basically, the minimal gene set concept is scientists taking bacteria with very, very small genomes and trying to see how low can you go. So what is the minimal number of genes that are necessary in order to make an organism that's able to survive and reproduce on its own? Um, so what is the most basic organism that can physically exist? And the reason that scientists have been doing this is for the purposes of synthetic biology. So the idea is that we create an organism or we create a, the genome of an organism and if it's a smaller genome then it's easier to build in the lab. Um, and if it's easier to, when you can build an organism like that, then they're a little more easy to manipulate. So say we wanted to create a synthetic organism for some particular industrial purpose. And conventional genetic engineering, just for whatever reason, isn't how we want to do this. Um, what we can do, and what we've actually succeeded at doing, is we can take just the data for the genome so we can take the like a computer file for the genome of this particular organism and we can modify it however we want and then we can take the equivalent of a DNA printer and we can print out the genome of that organism now it's a little more complicated than that um, when I read the original paper where they did this in it was 2010 2011 um, they actually had to make different parts of the genome, so different parts of the DNA molecule, and then they had to basically stitch them together. So they couldn't print out the whole thing at once. But the idea is that if you have a very, very simple organism, that it's a lot more easy to manipulate, a lot more easy to control, and potentially we can do a lot more with it. Now, one of the things that scientists have discovered in this endeavor is that the simplest possible organism that you could possibly have um, that's free living requires hundreds and hundreds of genes. So the very, very, even a very basic organism requires hundreds of genes just to be able to survive and reproduce. Um, and that really shouldn't be too much of a surprise because if you think about it, um, living things need to do a lot of jobs. They need to collect and harvest energy. They need to replicate their genetic information. Um, there's a lot of things that even the most basic self-reproducing entity needs to have. Um, even if you tried to go, even if you tried to go below the level of the cell, even if you tried to have some kind of self-reproducing molecule, there's still a lot of things, a lot of different jobs that that molecule would have to be able to do all at once. And so the fact that while we're doing this research, we're finding that you can only go down to a few hundred uh, genes, I think that's a real problem for the notion that life arose naturally. Um, and the reason is that, and the reason for that is partly because even, even, the mo even one gene forming by chance, the odds of that happening are beyond astronomical. Um, I've gone through the calculations in previous videos, but the odds of getting one gene forming by chance properly would be about 1 in 20 to 100th power, 1 in 20 to the 1000th power. So, and compare that to the fact that there's only about 10 to the 80th atoms in the entire universe. So, even if you think of all of the atoms, not just on this planet, but in the entire universe, think about how big the galaxy is. You have billions and billions of stars um, and then you have billions and billions of galaxies in the known universe all of the individual atoms added up together that's only about 10 to the 80th and to get an average gene is about 1 in 20 1 in 20 to the thousandth power or 1 in 20 to the hundredth power uh, or somewhere in between depending on the su exact size of that particular gene um, and like I said, I've gone through that in my other videos a little more. So anyway, it's not just one gene you need, because that was the calculations for just one gene. You need hundreds all at once, otherwise the entire thing fails. Um, 
And this is what mainstream scientists are figuring out. These aren't these aren't creationists running around in running around at Liberty University. These are mainstream scientists working for working for major institutions. And of course, uh, creationists um, do mainstream work as well. But these particular scientists who are doing this. Um, they're not they're not running around they're not publishing in creationist magazines these guys are publishing in some of the top journals of our day so this is as mean this is as mainstream as you get so mainstream scientists who likely do believe in evolution are finding that you can't go below a few hundred genes you need at least a few hundred just have an organism to sur that survives. Um, now, I think that I think that um, people who will look at this video and they will say, "Well, uh, this guy is," they'll accuse me of creating a straw man argument because you know when evolutionists lose a debate they you know just say straw man at least i've been seeing that a lot in my comment boxes but the evolutionary explanation and do not accuse me of a straw man argument because yes technically this is origin of life but even origin of life research has taken a very evolutionary approach to going from molecules to the first cell so they the conventional wisdom, I guess we'll put it that way, says that you started out with a self-reproducing molecule that somehow arose, and then gradually this self-reproducing molecule evolved, it mutated, natural selection came in, and it eventually evolved into the first cell. So perhaps it was an RNA molecule, or something along those lines. Um, that's one of the, that's one of the big uh, candidates that the mainstream proponents propose. So see my video on the RNA world hypothesis. Um, but I think this is really, I think that the minimal genome, minimal gene set concept, these minimal genomes that we're calculating, I think that these really challenge the notion that you can go from a simple molecule to a self-reproducing organism because you have these hundreds of molecules and hundreds sorry you have hundreds of genes and you just can't seem you just can't seem to go any lower than that um, and of course cells have to do transcription translation various metabolic pathways um, even a basic living thing it needs to collect and harness energy it needs to replicate its information so even a self reproducing molecule still needs to do all of that it needs to be able to take energy from the environment and use it in order to make copies of itself and use it in order to, and harness this energy in order to do work so it's no surprise that you need so many genes all at once um, and of course the problem with self-reproducing molecules is there's no evidence that they ever existed I mean people try to come up with these bizarre these bizarre pieces of information that they call evidence um, but none of these really none of these are really good evidence that there ever was a self-reproducing molecule that existed um we have no self-reproducing molecules in the lab nobody's ever been able to build one um so we don't even know if it's physically possible for them to exist and it might not be possible it might be physically impossible for a molecule to be able to self-reproduce itself um, So there's a lot of problems with the notion that some molecule became the first cell. And so that's that's a lot of that's basically what I want to say wanted to say. And just to recap, so you need hundreds and hundreds of genes just to have a basic living organism. And there's no evidence, no solid good evidence that you could have a self-reproducing molecule that arose spontaneously on the early earth and somehow evolved into the cell and the reason is because these minimal genomes these hundreds of genes seem to be as low as you can go 
So this is basically biology limbo. Um, how low, you know, like the game limbo, how low can you go? Um, and unfortunately, I think the evolutionists will make an excuse. They'll um, bring in a lot of ad hominem attacks. They'll scream straw man, but you know what? This is mainstream science. Mainstream science is showing that in order to have a self-reproducing cell, you can't go below a few hundred genes. And there's no evidence that there's anything simpler that can self-reproduce. And just basically speculation. So anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Check out my websites um, and check out my other videos. Um, and God bless you all. Hope you all have a good day. Scrag out.